Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Welcome back to East versus West 7 at the Green Park Hotel in Pendik, Istanbul. It is time to pick it up again and we will move to the men's super heavyweight division one more time. And let me introduce our athletes to you now. The first of them is a young man who has already made a massive impression as big as his significant potential here at East versus West. He is representing and hailing from Sweden. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Beers Sparta! All right, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the stage, the left-handed prodigy here. Tobias, not only a strong guy, but in my opinion, the most technically versed guy here. At 26 years of age, this guy has mastered the sport of arm wrestling from a technical side. What a beast. And his opponent hails from and is representing Russia. He is a multiple Russian national champion, multiple. EAF European champion and a multiple WAF champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Vitaly Lati. Big Vitaly the legend coming out looking huge. This guy is, is about six foot nine. Both these guys are really tall, but Vitaly towers over everybody at this uh, East vs. West competition. It, the, the accolades of Vitaly Lenin are insane. This guy has pulled at the top of the world at the highest of the high levels. Uh, but this is left hand, so I'm really interested to see how his left is going to hold up. 33 years old, saying six foot eight, I think he's taller than that. 291 pounds and 18 inch biceps and forearms. Man, the guy's impressive. The guy's definitely impressive. No doubt. The good news and the bad news for Tobias. Yeah. The bad, the good news, right? This is a left-handed match, which is his left arm is the most impressive that he brings here. We've all seen Vitaly and from the right-hand side be celebrated like very few others in the history of the sport. The bad news to be is, I hear Vitaly's left arm is better than his right arm. Yeah, I've, I've heard the same thing. I think this is going to be, a, they're both top rollers, so this is most likely going to the straps. I would, I would bet my life that it's going to go to the straps. I'm actually surprised they didn't agree on it to begin with. Um, but this is going to be a battle of height. The, they're top rollers, but they're also different in their styles of top rolling. Um, so to see how they're going to expose the hand and wrist is going to be the, uh, the key here. First round will tell us a lot. Uh, and joining me in the booth right now, Mr. Neil Pickup. Wow. First round goes, heading to the straps, just like I predicted, but Vitaly very offensive in that driving sideways and not straight back, which is uh, not what I expected. Please. So he heading to the straps, guys, you're going to see these guys fighting for height. They're the, the webbing between their thumb, they're going to be trying to drive that up. They're going to be trying to get their arms vertical, their forearms vertical. Uh, it's going to be a battle of who can go higher and higher uh, in this setup, I believe. But the explosivity, um, surprising. Normally, to Tobias is a little bit faster, but Vitaly seemed to be hauling off a little bit faster in that first ready go. Uh, we'll see if it changes up uh, after the, the straps have been applied. It's going to be so interesting now to see whether the young Tobias Sprong can arm wrestle off the B-side. Vitaly the Latin, that towering arm. It's very loose. Not happy with the setup there, Tobias. You see Vitaly slide his elbow forward there and his webbing immediately went about an inch higher. And look at Tobias contesting it there because the Latin climbing, posting the knuckles to the ceiling. Needs to be smart and aggressive there, Tobias. His hand is badly exposed. Yep. That, that was the one thing I was wondering. I mean, they're both big, tall guys, but Vitaly is so long, and in this top rolling game, it's going to be, Tobias is probably going to be underneath Vitaly's hand. There's a good chance. So can he dig from that angle? Hard to accelerate on a guy when that index finger knuckle is so high, and it's being brought down now. That'll do Tobias some favors, and we've seen how good he can be wrestling, carving backwards, and 
Cobrin back to rotate out, but he's gonna need to here because that height remains with Vitaly. And look at him start to drop the shoulder now and rise up in the knuckle. B right oh, oh, the hands. Wow, Derek, that was a huge wow. win. Wow, Vitaly being explosive. <laughs> That was the one thing we weren't really talking about a lot is how explosive can Vitaly let him be? And he really showed it there. Tobias being the, young, the younger athlete and being uh, the, even the way he trains, it's generally CrossFit and just add more explosivity. It's surprising. Look at that on the replay. If we sit, oh, we only saw the end of it there. But what was really evident was as the guy started to take that grip, the way that <clears throat> the Latin started to edge that shoulder down and punch that index finger knuckle high to the ceiling. This is a man who's grown up through the weight classes, always had that height advantage, and he knows how to make it stick as well as anyone in the world. And look at that face, like a mill pond, super calm. And uh, Vitaly's been asked questions. I mean, at the press conference, someone asked him a question. Hey, uh, traditionally, you've had problems with other top rollers. I mean, showing that with, with his hand size and, and with his, his length, when he's explosive, he can handle other top rollers as well. But I think this is a, because this is a game of hand and wrist control, it can really switch on a dime. This isn't something uh, like, like a hook match where you can see that their bicep taxing as much. When it comes to top rolling, it's a game of inches and centimeters and who can make small adjustments. So you can't really count anybody out immediately, I don't believe. Now, Tobias Sparong made his name and his greatest weapon is that counter top roll. He's super fast, super explosive. But the issue that he's got is in the setup, Vitaly's so tall, so rangy, that he's creating a block. It's a mental block on Tobias because he cannot accelerate into the arm in the way he would like to. Needs to find a way of dropping the arc of the Latin, trying to bring that arm down to a position from where he can be effective with the hand and wrist dominance that he loves. That's going to mean that he needs to keep the arm in contact with opponent. He cannot make it about hands. If he does that, he's in trouble, Derek. I, I, I do believe if it had more of an, a slower inside option, I, I believe Tobias could be in the game. Uh, I don't think they're going to want to go there, though. It's going to stay outside. Um, but catching Vitali, if Vitali's being the offensive, explosive arm wrestler, um, might prove difficult. So I I'm definitely want to see Tobias be a little more offensive, a little more active. Well, not necessarily offensive, but a little more active in the setup and uh, at, the, at the ready go. Can he move first? Can he move before Vitali? Throughout the setup, the pronator is activated by Vitali Lalatin. He's so square to the table. Autopilot, really square, loves to relax, relax. utilize that relax. range, that height, keep that Don't thumb move. and that index finger knuckle as high in the match as he hey, possibly hey. can, and he does so with great Don't effect. Move. Referee's grip, look for the thumbs, they will come down, followed by the hands. Be ready, watch for that explosive start from these men, both fast hitters. Hello! A little early there, the Latin takes. A little bit of the initiative there, but well before the command. That, that was, I believe that was a false start? Yeah, yeah. Well before the start. A little bit edgy there. He obviously gives to, Tobias a great deal of respect. He's on his guns, no doubt about that. And he needs to be, because Tobias, if he gets a bite in this, you feel like that confidence, that youth. Here we go, back into the... Move, Rev's push. grip. You feel like that confidence would hey. rise up quickly. And he's gapping quite well there. Don't Look at the distance move. created. Looking to hey, don't move. find a way back into this match. Don't tall don't order move. with this tall human. Oh! Weird start again, and this time better. What have we got there? It's an elbow. Elbow just... foul on Pop. Tobias. Was that off the front, Derek? Uh, I think it popped at trying, when he was trying to counter roll and hold on to Vitaly. Uh, yeah, Tobias' was, arm, elbow came off the, the top of the pad, I believe. But what was good for Tobias there was that he managed to post enough to force Vitaly to spin his hand a little bit. And he's so good off that defensive position. He wrestles off the counter so well, and he was doing so there. But you do feel like the strap, if we see it come out again, will give Vitaly a big advantage. So Tobias is going to be aware of that, and he needs to gather hand. Climb, climb, climb. Always be climbing. That's the mantra. Can he make it stick? I'm more interested. I'd like to see Tobias trying to pull his thumb back, create a little bit more space here. I know it's harder in the, in the ref script, but he needs to get in Vitaly's fingers a little bit. Vitaly with a really long hand. Stop. 
I think another elbow foul maybe there. That's, was that another that elbow foul? Coincidental. Coincidental foul, I think. You first, okay. Hard to see exactly what the situation is there. It was either early or elbow on both competitors. We are in the referee's grip. The thumbs will come down. Who will initiate first? You can see a little bit more supinated approach from to be a sparong. By contrast, Lalatin seeing the palm. Oh, seeing the back of the hand, big drive again, but better from Sparong. Much more dynamic. Tried to climb, didn't have any purchase though, and went to the strap. I feel like he was trying to escape as much as he can out there to bring the straps in to get a little more connection to Vitali. Vitali's hand uh, looking a lot bigger and a lot more dominant that I think Tobias just wants to get his arm connected to Vitali's arm a little bit to try to take a little bit of that, that hand size out, out of the equation. Definitely does, Derek. And there were sort of two hits there. The first one from Tobias was definitely to gain and to gather hand position. It didn't work. And the second one was just get out of this match because he was on his way to the pad. Very smart move from the young Swede. There was the, the second ready go there. It almost looked like Tobias was shooting forward for a hook. I wonder, is that in his arsenal? Is that something he could potentially bring out against Vitaly? Well, even if it is, it's such a big ask when you've got someone of this level of power driving back at you so aggressively. And I think it would, it's, a, it's almost a bravery thing, isn't it? Right. Have, you, have you got the balls to do it when you're pulling a guy like Vitaly Lalati? Yes. Stay in the ref's grip, we're into the strap. You can feel the tension, Derek, can't you, even from, mm. from up here. And look at the face of Vitaly Lalatin. He is very much aware of the threat represented by Tobias Sparong. This young Swede is dangerous. Oh, big draw, dominant. That was a dominant victory there and a, a different approach entirely from Vitaly. They're much more side. Went over the top of the thumb there. You see Tobias at the end of that match look over and shake his head like that was not the way to try to arm us a Vitaly Lenin. So this is going to show the versatility of Tobias. What can he adjust here? Uh, Vitaly being able to post high and drive sideways in that strap and Tobias not able to expose the fingers of Vitaly. Um, what can he switch up here, Neil? Do you think there's something in his bag of tricks uh, that, that he can do to change his game? You know what was interesting there, mate? If you look at this on the replay, it's a totally different approach. Almost gave a little wrist and hand there, Vitaly. Watch this. He literally lets his wrist and hand drop a little there and moves, keeps that application of the pronator straight over the top of the thumb. And the difference here is high-level competition experience. In Vitaly Lalatin, you're seeing a guy who's progressed through the weight classes. This is the man who started a much lighter weight class where the application of technique is more important, the application of top-end strength is less significant, and it's showing. He's put that meat on that massive frame, and now he's got the power to back it up, and he's closing out the opportunities, closing out the light for Tobias. The one thing you mentioned earlier, Derek, which I think is prominent, you get to a time in a match and you've got to think, you know what, I'm in. Kamikaze style, let's see what we can do. Let's try something different. And that moment is right now. We saw it from Paul Lynn. We've seen it from Irakli Zirakashvili. Will we see it from Tobias Perot? It, it will, I mean, will Tobias, could he go shoulder forward? I mean, I, I, there's, there's still options on the table, I believe. He's an athlete. This kid is amazing. I say kid because he's on the younger side. But I know he has options. There's things he can do with that lane. He does have a long arm. He does have, have a big frame. I know he can pull off a lot of things. So hopefully, I know his main move is, is top rolling and uh, trying to expose that hand. But I think there's other things he can potentially do. I mean, he's a very, very amazing arm wrestler and very athletic. He really is. And, and what that says to us is that Vitaly Lazza, Lazza is back with that left arm. And that's an ominous thing for everybody in the super heavyweight division because he is really on his arm wrestling here. Mm -hmm. Looks super fluid, looks super confident. And if you look at the face of Tobias, there's a lot of question marks on that young man's face. Open. Look at the aggression, look at the dominance shown by Lalatin. It'd be great if Tobias could get a bite in this match. Managed to move the arm and It'd be nice to see what Lalatin has got if this thing stopped and turned into any kind of grinder. It's, it's crazy to see when, when Vitaly's hand is open like that. His thumb is up in uh, Tobias' fingers, but also the depth of his fingers at the same time. So he has deep coverage around Tobias while being up in Tobias' fingers at the same time. That's how long his hand is, which is insane to see. Here we go. Down come the thumbs. Referee's grip. Watch for the fingers closing down now. Don't move. 
And the first man to initiate oh, is so important. Oh, that looked like a jump start. Yep, it was. And this in a in a set grip, you guys, that's gonna be a warning. They're they're not doing fouls. Normally you guys it would be fouls, but we're trying to end this on pins. We're not trying to hand out unnecessary fouls too much. We want we want to see pins in these matches. There we go. Back into that referee's grip to be a strong Sweden's signature super heavyweight. The man opposite him in the black shirt, that is Vitaly Lalatin of Russia, multiple European and world champion in multiple weight classes. Right now, he is an ominous, imposing shadow on the super heavyweight division. The first outing on the left in a long time, and it is an impressive one. He leads by two pins to zero here. And that's a, oh, that is a big foul off the front there, I think. But Tobias, he's getting a little desperate there, Derek. Yeah, he, he's trying more. You can see him trying to get that connection in the setup. You see Tobias supinating in the palm. He's trying to connect his wrist to Vitaly's wrist, but not necessarily for a deep hook, I don't think. I think something more like a higher hook. Uh, just he wants to be connected to below Vitaly's wrist to try to put the brakes on Vitaly's arm. And it's fine for me to sit here and say he could do this, he could do that, but some very different experiences, as we both know, Derek. When you're up there, you're in the heat of the moment, and you can feel the opposing forces that someone of this level of experience and technical proficiency is putting into you. And yeah. Latin is looking really good tonight. He's coming fresh, he's coming ready, and a point to prove. Look at how square his body is there, just making sure he emphasizes that height and watch for him to be quick out of the blocks here. He has been all night. Oh, big driving, all oh, better from Tobias. That was better. Definitely, definitely better. He had a lot of resistance at the front, uh, at, the, at the center table, and by the time Vitaly drove sideways, uh, Tobias keeping up that resistance ended up exposing Vitaly's hand a little bit. I'm not sure if that's going to hold up through the straps. Uh, Vitaly being able to drive sideways with that massive shoulder, um, I, it's been it's been a little bit too much for Tobias previously. So I'm. I'm I'm interested. I'm really interested still within the straps to see the lane that Tobias is going to pursue here to try to change the game. I mean, it has to do something different than what he's done before. I mean, what can he do differently now to create a different scenario where he can come out on top? Maybe holy water, maybe rosary beads. Because let me tell you now, I cannot overemphasize the level of concern that I have for Tobias Sparong. This is it. Last chance saloon for the young Swede and he has been on the receiving end. He's been a punching bag tonight for an inform, returning, resurgent Vitaly Lalatin. What have you got left, Tobias Sparong? He needs to bring something very dynamic to this arm wrestling match now. Get off the back foot. Does he have it in him, Derek? Come on, Tobias. Let's see what you got. Bring it to the table. Let's go. Look how square Lalatin is there, really steps over, fills up all that space and retains the height. That index finger knuckle on the thumb. And he's so hard on the pronator, so explosive. Complaining about Tobias rising. You know what, I don't see that as Tobias' lane either. I just don't see a win for him there. Needs to... Move that arm, commit to moving the arm. You first. Down come the thumbs. We see the hands closing slowly now. Who will be first on the trigger? Oh, hey, big drive again, La Latin. And that one looked like it was a pin. Nothing from the refs yet, but we're going to get it. And there it is, Derek Smith. Vitali La Latin. And he was absolutely imperious here tonight on the left arm. It's, it's so great to see Vitaly back on these big stages and competing. He's, he's a fan favorite all the time. Mm -hmm. This guy, his, his pedigree is ridiculous. The things he's accomplished yep. are insane. Um, so excited to see where he goes from here and uh, what his options are. I mean, is he going to continue to compete left-handed? Are we going to see him in Morozov potentially? I'm really excited to hear his next matches. Looking at that replay again, we didn't catch it here in the commentary box. I think we'll get another look at it, but just a phenomenal performance. And the big thing from Vitaly Lalatin tonight was how confident he looked throughout. He was so calm and so quick and so evolving in his style. He was countering the counter. A phenomenal performance from a very dangerous arm wrestler. I'm gonna get myself back down to stage side and welcome back the phenomenal beast, Travis Bajan, to the commentary booth.
We are here with Vitali Laletin. Let's make great, let's make left arm great again, I think. Again, I'll ask in Russian, then I'll translate to English. Сегодня чувствовал, в принципе, себя неплохо, в неплохой форме, но я понимаю, что далеко не моя максимальная форма, потому что я уже пять лет не боролся на левой руке абсолютно вообще нигде. So I asked him, how does his left arm feels? He hasn't competed in five years, so he believes he's not on his best shape yet, but it's coming. Обязательно есть у меня мечта стать лучшим рукоборцем на левой руке во всем мире. He, he, he has a dream to become the best on the left arm on the planet right now, and he will aim to do that. Do you have, any, uh, do you have anyone in mind? На левой руке, в принципе, я готов с любым бороться. Если мне еще немного дать времени, мне без разницы, кем будет побороться, на левой руке именно. He said with left arm, he doesn't, it doesn't matter who he's face, just give him time to prepare and he'll be ready. Vitaly Lalitin. Курдечо with left arm. Нет проблем, Ингин, без проблем. Курдечо, давай курдечо сюда. А тебе спасибо за приглашение, что ты пригласил меня на такой прекрасный турнир. Уважение тебе. He said, of course, no problem. Let's set it up with Курдечо. Ингин's making matches from the, from the sidelines right here. He wanted to thank Engin for bringing him and uh, for this great competition. Yeah. Yeah. Metallo Letin.